Okay, so um, to start the lipedema exam, I'm going to examine your head first, okay? <laughs> so I'm not feeling any of that. Then I check the chest, and I'm checking for thickness of the fat. If it's really thick, I check for nodules. So this is uh, stage one lipedema. I'm also looking for uh, pockets of fluid that are in the skin themselves, and I'm not seeing any of those pockets. Jennifer, just tell me with your words why you want to come or you visit me. Okay, well, so uh, when I was first diagnosed um, in the summer of 2010, yeah. they told me there was nothing I could do. And it did happen. I had um, surgery December 2009. Yeah. And then all of a sudden my legs got really big. But my legs, they always had a tendency to be larger. Yeah. But they would get small as, you know, I was active yeah. and things like that. This is the first time I've had many surgeries for endometriosis. Yeah. I've had um, a pregnancy. She was yeah. born a cesarean. Yeah. So my legs stayed very swollen after that for a while, but they would always shrink back down. Then the surgery in 2009, they did not shrink mm. back down. Okay. And I went to the lymphedema clinic and the one person said, who, who recognized it said, this is lipedema, yeah. not lymphedema. Yeah. Well, lipedema is a diagnosis we are talking about mm -hmm. and why you're here. Um, is the whole leg involved first or did it start at the upper leg or the lower leg? I want to say that it, my thighs and yeah. butt, yeah. my butt, my yeah, my my butt have always been big. Okay. Um, however, you know, talking about skiing, yeah. I've always had a very challenging time finding ski boots that would fit yeah. on my calves. Yeah. Um, and the way I described how my legs yeah. changed is. I was there always very slender and athletic, yeah. but they went from being sticks to yeah. being trunks. Yeah. So they never had shape ever. Yeah. Well, as we can see, you're not overweight. You have a mm -hmm. normal weight. And, and um, later we, I will do the examination. We see the disproportion, I think. As we can see, she has a normal weight body with a normal waist. And even she's uh, got uh, one one children and what we see first is the disproportion between the upper and the lower body for as we can say the upper and the legs and then we check the lower leg for 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 edema and if there is still a hole we have water in the legs in her case the fat is soft, no hole after press it. This is a perfect situation for liposuction treatment. For my procedure, my philosophy of liposuction is to do the treatment not in one step, but in smaller steps. In her case, I plan three procedures. We start in the inner thigh and, and knee, then out and front, and the last, the lower legs. The time between the procedures min for a minimum of four weeks. How do you feel, Wally? I feel good. Are you ready for your next thingy, liposuction? I'm ready, and I'm ready for it to be all done. Yay! Hello, Jennifer. Good morning. morning. How was it going this night? Um, I just didn't sleep well, but uh, the pain was fine. Yeah? Yeah, it was comfortable. That's a perfect, f completely normal result one day after surgery. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You see almost no hematoma in this case. There's a little bit bruising, 
but this is fine. Huh? So where did you have liposuction? Uh, the whole inner, outer, and all, all leg, mm -hmm. that's it. This is all normal. I don't know, I don't really remember what you felt like before, but this is all normal. All this, which is great. And when you left, you had stage one, two, but your thighs, I said two. Yeah. So you're back to stage one. So do I need to worry about it growing back? It's, it should grow back very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. So, but I think, I mean, I guess I would recommend that, you know, this area might, you know, just want to be careful with it. I, I don't know, I still think you need to heal a little bit more before we make a final yes or no, mm -hmm. because it's been such a short period of time. Yeah. And I'm just really impressed by the lack of lipedema fat that I can feel. Yay. <laughs> the post-surgery procedure, I had a great support network of MLD therapists and uh, whatnot that have helped to guide me on compression and what exercises to do and things like that. Um, it's been a process that was a little bit more strenuous on my body than I originally thought it would be. Um, but I am seeing my legs change constantly it's it's a constant it's a constant change it's a redistribution everything is re you know distributing to look more like uh, normal tapered legs and there's still the skin retraction that needs to happen um, but uh, it's 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 going really well it's going really well the tips that I would give for someone considering getting liposuction is to first and foremost know that you're going to be a little uncomfortable afterwards, that the recovery process is to be respected. I, I think it's important that you have a good rapport um, with your, your aftercare plan because the aftercare is just as important as the liposuction itself. So if you want to get the optimal results, the aftercare is critical. So, you know, preparing, I would say to make sure that you have your NLD person lined up, that you have a diet that works lined up, um, that you are prepared to be uncomfortable, but know that there will be a positive outcome. I would say that I'm still in awe of the entire experience. To meet with the group of women who have experienced the same struggles and working on, you know, keeping spirits high and believing in each other and believing in the process and, you know, it's, it's nothing short of pure magic. Pure magic that, um, I didn't anticipate. I, I set forth the intention and it manifested and now I'm in complete awe of it. Uh, it's been a very remarkable experience and I've met some amazing people along the way. Statement. Gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence. Dreams is a monument.